I told you we're going to have fun today, right? Yes. Let's talk about functions. Okay. Now, before we talk about functions, we need to talk about what it means to be a relation. You mean like a brother or a sister? No. A relation is a set or collection of ordered pairs. A relation is a set or a collection of ordered pairs. For example, now I'm going to use the set builder notation, so curly brackets here. I'm just going to list some ordered pairs. Two, three, four, one, zero, one, two, negative two, and let's do negative one, five. This is a relation. Okay. It's just a collection of ordered pairs. Uh, that, that's all. There's nothing more to that. Okay. Now sometimes when we put a bunch of ordered pairs together, we can have a graph. Something that looks like this. Okay. That graph right there is itself a collection of ordered pairs. It has an infinite number of ordered pairs, so I'm not able to list them individually. Okay. You guys okay with what it is to be a relation? It's just a a group, it's a collection, it's a set of ordered pairs. Now, when we talk about relations, we want to talk about the domain. And the domain is the set of x values, the set of x values used in the relation. The domain is the set of x values used in the relation. On the other side of that, you have the range. And the range is the set of y values used in the relation. Okay. So the domain connects with the x's, and the range connects with the y values. You all right with that? So when I talk about the domain, I want to list, if I can, all of the x values that I use in the relation. So let's look at this first example that I have up here. Okay. Can you tell me the domain, the list of all of the x values? Now, and before we, before you answer, just let me go ahead and let you know. When we talk about domain and range, we list them and we organize them from least to greatest based on the order that is inherent in the real numbers. So when I look at this guy right here, this first example, I'm going to be using my set builder notation. And I'm going to list my x values that are used from least to greatest. So what are they? Negative one, zero, two, and four. Even though two occurs twice, you only have to list it one time. Because the domain is just saying, let me know all of the x's that you're using. You don't need to tell me you're using two twice. All I need to know is that you're using it, and that's and we're good. Now what is your range? What's the set of y values that I'm using here? From least to greatest. Negative 2, 1, 3, and 5. Notice that for the domain, you just look at the x's. For the range, you're only looking at the y values. What do you guys think about that? 
So I can look at this relation and say, you know what, these are the only x values that I'm using in that relation. These are the only y values that I'm using in that relation. That's what it means. Now what about this picture right here? What's the domain? Tell me the set of x values that I'm using in this picture. I'm using everything, right? right. You, can't, you cannot say I'm only talking about the points where it crosses the axes. I'm, that's not what I'm saying. Notice that you're using all, all these little points right here, right? Right. So what are the x values that make this up? Well, it's going to be all real numbers. And we can say that by writing this from negative infinity to infinity using interval notation that we talked about in 0308 when we talked about inequalities. You also could say for this guy, this funny looking R symbol. That means all real numbers. That's how we denote the entire set of real numbers. Because you see this guy goes all the way to the left. He goes all the way to the right. There's no break in terms of the x values that are being used to make up this picture. Okay. If you try to list certain x values, then you're going to be missing an infinite number of values. What about your range here? Range is the set of y values. So notice this guy goes all the way down. He goes all the way up. So it's going to take every single y value that we can think of to make up this picture. So again, we'll say negative infinity to infinity. What do you guys think? We're going to do a lot more examples here in just a moment. We're just going to start with this. But before we go on to some pictures that I already have made up for you, we need to talk about what it means to be a function. Okay. A function, well, functions are, are a subset of relations. A function is a relation. It's a relation where each x each x is paired with only one y value. Each x is paired with only one y value. Okay? You with me on that? Now, go back to the weird stuff that I was talking about yesterday with relationships. Okay? What do we say? We said the x's were what? guys and the y's are women. So let's read it that way. A function is a relation where each guy is paired with only one woman. Are you with me on that? Each guy, each guy is paired with just one woman. If one guy is paired up with more than one woman, then, he's, then we don't have a function. We have, you know, like this bad episode of Cheaters, right? Oh, I'm sorry, Secretos. <laughs> let's, look, <laughs> let's look at this guy right here. Is this first example representative of a function? Yeah. Is each X pair with just one woman? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, really? No. Really? No. No. There's two ones. No, it's two. Hold on, no, hold on. Notice what it says. It says each guy is paired with just one woman. Does it say anything about does it say anything about the woman? The X, the X is the guy, right? Mm-hmm. And the Y is the girl. But there's two Y values of one. But but that doesn't matter. What this is basically saying is that the guys can't cheat. It doesn't say anything about the woman cheating. Women, you guys can you so you ladies can cheat if you want to here to be a function. Okay. But zero one. What about zero? Who cares about zero one? Four one and zero one. That all it tells me is that the girl's cheating. That is, okay, I don't so care. Two twos. You got two three and two negative two. Right. This is the problem. Two is in a relationship with three, right? Uh -huh. Now two is a slacker. He doesn't have a job. She goes off to work, right? And when she goes off to work, hello, lady. <laughs> <laughs> 
He <laughs> <laughs> downgraded, huh? Well, <laughs> well, this this guy he has his very very small goals. He's if you know what I mean. <laughs> but this guy's a cheater, right? So what we're saying here is this guy is this guy is not a function. This guy is not a function because we have a cheater. Now, later on in college algebra, we talk about where not only can the guys not cheat, but the women can't cheat either. And you end up with a very special kind of function called a one-to-one -one function. Okay. Now, what about this, this curvy graph right here? Is this guy a function? Yes or no? Here's something that might help you out. What were you going to say? Vertical line test. Vertical line test. <coughs> the vertical line test. Now this says that um, for a graph to represent a function, for a graph to represent a function, each vertical line each vertical line passes through the graph passes through the graph in at most one point. In order for your graph to represent a function, every vertical line passes through that graph in at most one point. So if I go back and look at this curvy guy up here, no matter where I draw a vertical line, mm -hmm. how many points am I going through on that graph? I'm only crossing through one point, right? The, the axes are not part of the graph itself. It's this curve which is the graph. So every vertical line that I draw, how many points am I hitting? Just one. That's okay. If I were crossing through more than one point, then I would have something that's not a function. Okay. Now, just to kind of give you guys a good idea about what it is to be a function or not a function, uh, would be your calculator. Okay. Especially if you have a like a cheap, you know, dollar store calculator. Let me show you. If I type in five times six, okay, what what do I get? I, I get one answer, right? If I type in five times six again, I still get thirty. If I started getting different answers for typing in the same thing, then something something's not right. Do you all agree? Right. Now let me ask you this: Is five times six the only way to get to thirty? No, I could do twenty-seven plus three. I still get thirty. But here's the thing. If I type in 27 plus 3 again, what do I get? So that's an example of a function. Okay? This is my input, and I get a single output value. Okay? Is the whoops, excuse me. Is the output value unique? Is that the only way to get to 30? No. No. If I do, you know, 4 plus 8, I get 12. No matter how I type in 4 plus 8, I can only get 12. But is that the only way to 12? No. no. 2 times 6, 4 times 3. Each of these input values gives me one answer. Okay. So we have a function here. Just like if I were to talk to you guys and ask you, when is your birth date? Mm -hmm. when is your, when's your birthday? You have one birthday, right? Mm -hmm. I was saying, no, Amy, what, what, you have two birthdays? That's so weird. <laughs> now, you have one birthday. Nicole, you have a birthday. Now, are you the only person who has your birthday? Yeah. No. You can be cool like me and share it with some really neat people. Yes. Like Liv Tyler. Yeah. Or the late Princess Diana. Wow. All the same day. 
Well, the same day. Oh, the same birthday, not the same date, not the same year. Well, I know, but every month, same birthday. Yeah. yeah. And Missy Elliott. And Missy Elliott. <laughs> and you. And Dan Aykroyd. Yeah, I don't know who Dan Aykroyd is. You don't know who Dan Aykroyd is. Okay, we need to stop right now. <laughs>